Picture this. You've just arrived in Japan at Tokyo Narita International Airport, and you want to get to exploring this massive city as soon as possible. You decide to take the train, and of course you would. Japan's trains are known to be on time, highly frequent, they cover just about anywhere you would want to go, and the modern trains have a state of the art design that ensures a comfortable trip. There's just one giant daunting problem this. How are you ever supposed to find your way when the transit map looks like this? Or even like this, when it's simplified? It looks overwhelming. Is riding the train in Tokyo even worth this mental exercise? I propose to you that the Tokyo transit system is incredibly complicated, but not too complicated for you. I believe in you, and to give you the tools to be a true Tokyo tourist, I've made this video that will explain the Tokyo rail system. Instead of trying to figure out the map for hours, you can use that time that you're waiting on the platform to buy a drink at the vending machine. Now my very first recommendation would be for you to purchase a Suica or a Osmo card the moment you get to Japan. These are IC chip cards that work as a ticket. So you just charge a certain amount of money onto them and then you can use them on railway lines, subway lines, buses. You can even use them to buy your Obento boxes at the convenience store. Now the way to overcome this entangled mess of a railway map is to divide it into sections. And we're gonna divide these based on services. So number one, Japan's most famous bullet train. Known in Japanese as the Shinkansen, this was the world's first high-speed network. It opened in 1964 between Tokyo and Osaka. And in 2021, you can take the Shinkansen to many destinations in Japan, including, but not limited to, Hamamatsu, Nagoya, Kyoto, Osaka, Kobe, Himeji, Okayama, Hiroshima, Hitakyushu, Fukuoka, Takasaki, Niigata, Karuizawa, Nagano, Toyama, Kanazawa, Fukushima, Sendai, Shinjo, Yamagata, Morioka, Akita, Aomori, and Hakodate. And it's continuing to be extended. Now, if you're just gonna stay in Tokyo, you won't ride the Shinkansen, but the Shinkansen is available with your Japan Rail Pass and is the best way to get to sites far away from Tokyo. The original high-speed line, the one that was opened in 1964, is the Tokaido Shinkansen operated by JR Central. This line has a fairly homogeneous fleet of N700 high-speed trains that go 285 kilometers per hour to Osaka and then 300 kilometers per hour further west to Fukuoka. And the fastest Nozomi service goes to Osaka in a little over two hours. These trains leave from Tokyo Station, but you can also get on at Shinagawa Station, which is about a 10 minute ride away from Tokyo Station and still in downtown Tokyo. Please remember that Shinkansen trains require a ticket, a reservation, Moving on, as we look at this big and complicated map, the next important thing to discern are the JR lines. JR stands for Japan Railways, and this company has a long history. You're almost guaranteed to have an interaction with JR East. The Japan Rail Pass covers these trains, so if you've bought one of those, you will definitely be riding one. And the Narita Express from Narita Airport to Tokyo Station and destinations beyond also is part of the JR East network. However, later in this video, I will be recommending a train that I think is better than the Narita Express. Until the 1980s, this was the Japanese National Railways, and these were the lines that were... JNR split into 
seven different companies and JR East Japan gained responsibility over the north and east of the main island of Japan along with the Tokyo metropolitan area and because it carries so many passengers a day JR is one of the largest railway companies in the world if not the largest. What makes the JR lines great is that they serve a number of downtown areas that other railway companies don't and they also stop at all six of the major terminals Tokyo, Ueno, Ikebukuro, Shinjuku, Shibuya, and Shinagawa. All JR lines are color coded and at stations and in every train there is a color coded map where each color corresponds to the service of the train. The trains themselves carry that same color and so do all the signs at the station. On top of that, JR trains recently have added have been added line codes. For example, the Chuo line is the JC, the Joban line is the JJ, and the KO line is the JE. Stations are marked with numbers. For example, the seventh stop on the KO line was JE07, and Yotsuya Station, the fourth stop on the Chuo line, JC04. You get the picture. The backbone of the JR East network is the Yamanote line, and this is because these trains run a full loop around the city center of Tokyo. There are 30 stations on this loop, and each train takes exactly one hour to complete it, trains running either in the clockwise or counterclockwise direction around the city center of Tokyo. All but two of these stations offer transfers to other railway lines, making this one of the most used lines in the world, and the trains are crowded and very frequent. Sometimes you'll be standing at a station and before the last car of the previous train has pulled out of the station, the first car of the next train is already pulling in. JR offers a number of local lines as well as some longer distance commuter lines that go into the suburbs of Tokyo and into Yokohama. These trains have an added feature that they have a green car. If you see a logo that looks like this, beware. You can't just sit here, you need to buy a special reservation in these green cars. The Rinkai Line is a private owned company that runs under the Bay of Tokyo, however these services all connect to JR services, so effectively it's part of the JR network. One final feature that JR East offers is the Tokyo or touristy hotspots. So if you see a train at a platform marked as a limited express, don't go in there unless that is the train that you have booked for your day trip excursion. And these of course are also available to ride with the Japan Rail Pass. Next let's talk about the Tokyo subway. I feel like this is the most famous public transportation in Tokyo. Tokyo was the first city in Asia to have a subway when the Ginza line opened in 1927. Currently, there are 13 lines, 9 owned by private company Tokyo Metro, and 4 lines owned by the Tokyo Metropolitan Government. These lines are branded as the Toei Subways. Between two lines of the same company, so two Tokyo Metro lines or two Toei lines, transfers are free. And if you transfer between a Toei train and a Tokyo Metro train, it is just like transferring between two other companies. 
They do sell paper through tickets and there are some stations where there are no ticket gates between the two companies. But to be on the safe side, you guessed it, your Suica. Or try this, the day pass. Since Tokyo Metro fees are cheap, but not incredibly cheap, each ride will cost somewhere between 130 and 200 something yen. By the time you have five or six rides, this 600 yen day pass for only Tokyo Metro trains or 800 yen day pass for Tokyo Metro and Toei trains really is your best value. The Tokyo subway network links all the important districts downtown with some of the major JR stations as well as some of the imminent suburbs. Most lines connect to other railway services as well. And they are all color coded and letter coded just like the JR lines. You can tell something is a subway line because the station code will have a circle with one letter and two numbers. For example, Hachidoki station on the Oedo line is station number E17. There's a magenta circle, an E on top, and 17 on the bottom. The Tokyo subway really does a great job of showing you which way to go. There are a lot of signs on stations that even indicate how many meters the walk is until the platform. Trains have LCD screens that show transfer information and the color coding is everywhere. Everything is also in English. I have not found a single Tokyo subway station that does not have sufficient English. Not every sign might be in English, there'll be enough for you to know where to go. The Tokyo Metro is very safe. There are women only cars in rush hour so that women can have a safe and pleasant traveling experience. And there are platform screen doors on virtually every station. I believe somewhere in the next few years, the entire project is to be completed. And these doors make sure that there are no accidents involving the tracks. Most subway stations will have a copy of the Tokyo subway map with all the lines and their specific color codes. And the other lines in Tokyo, like the JR lines, will usually just be indicated with a gray line. So you really will need both of these maps if you want to make sense of them. Next is a feature that is quite uncommon in a lot of cities around the world but is really the essence of train travel in Japan. It's the private rail company. These companies include Seibu, Tobu, Keisei, KQ, Tokyu, Odakyu, Keio, Sotetsu, and Tsukuba Express. The best way to treat these companies is to see them as their own separate system. I know it's very tempting to look at a city in try to find the entire public transportation system, but trust me, you will serve yourself better if you see these systems as separate systems. Plus, many of the private railway companies a tourist doesn't end up riding, although I highly recommend you do if you like trains, because some of the coolest trains run on these private railway companies. Like take this one, it runs on the Sabre Railway, and because of the shape of its face, it's called the Smile Train. Or look at this sleek design. The private railway companies all radiate from one of the six main terminal stations on the Yamanote line. Many depart from Shinjuku, some from Ikebukuro, and one departs from Asakusa, where the famous temple and the Tokyo Sky Tree are. These lines almost all go into suburb cities of Tokyo and serve commuters going into the city in the morning and out of the city in the afternoon. They have their own fare structures, some are incredibly cheap, some are more expensive. They have their own service patterns. So when you're at the station, make sure to look on a diagram which train will stop where. Some of these companies that have many lines have color-coded their lines, such as Tokyo Railway and Sabre Railway. Others only have one or two main lines. And in order to look at where they're going, you have to look at the station diagrams. 
Many of these companies operate limited express trains. This is the Romance car, which is one of the most popular. For more on limited express trains, please watch a video that we will upload here on Trains Are Awesome soon that is all about these trains. One thing I do want to say, the best way to get from Narita Airport to downtown Tokyo is not the Narita Express, it's the Skyliner. Operated by Keisei Railway, these trains travel between Narita and Ueno in about 43 minutes and cost significantly less than Narita Express. These private railways serve places such as Hakone, Nikko, Kawagoe, and Kamakura, which are all famous tourist cities that are easily doable as day trips from Tokyo. If you're ready for this to be a little bit more confusing, I would like to introduce the term through service. It's kind of what it sounds like. It's when a train from one company, usually a subway company, travels onto the tracks of a different company. This makes color coding trains a little bit more complicated because you could be on the green Danian Toshi line and have a purple Hanzo Mon line subway train on your platform. Are you still with me? So far we've had the Shinkansen bullet trains, we've had the JR lines, we've had the Tokyo subway lines, and we've had the private railway companies. We are almost done. There's one more unique category in Tokyo, and that is the miscellaneous category. I don't know what to call these, but these are unique public transportation systems that serve the areas that the normal lines don't cover. They can be rubber tire trains, they can be monorails, Tokyo even has two remaining streetcar lines. These trains look weird and offer a unique experience. My number one recommendation, and you'll find this in a lot of tourist guides, is the Yurikamo. This line is named after a seagull, and it's clear to see why. These rubber tire trains cross the Tokyo Bay in the magnificent Rainbow Bridge. And then they stop at the hotspot of Odaiba and the shopping center of Toyosu. The best part about these trains is that you can sit in the front of the train and watch the tracks. There is no driver. If you fly into Haneda Airport, you have the choice between the KQ Private Railway or the Tokyo Monorail. Tokyo Monorail was opened in 1964 and is effectively part of the JR network since they use the same station numbering code and air structure. Or try the Disney Resort lines. And not only do the stations play Disney music, the trains have Mickey Mouse shaped windows. Tokyo has two tram lines, the lesser known Tokyo Setagaya line in the suburbs and the famous Tokyo Sakura tram. Tokyo used to have an extensive tram network that was all but replaced by the bus and the Sakura tram is the only one that's remaining. It doesn't go through a very touristy part of town, but especially for railway enthusiasts, the Sakura tram is a must have on your bucket list. Let's summarize where we've been. The Tokyo train map is incredibly confusing. Lines go everywhere and anywhere, but there is an organization to it and I hope I've helped you see it. We split up the map into five different categories. High speed trains, JR lines, subway lines, private lines, and miscellaneous lines. When you're traveling through Tokyo, the best thing to do is know ahead of time which system you'll be using to get where. And now that we're at the end of the video, I have a couple helpful tools for you. 
There are two apps. One is the Transit Maps app. This map has all the different lines on it on one map, but you can zoom in. It's all in English. And I found it to be very helpful. And the coolest feature is the free version also includes countries like the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Thailand. And this is the most helpful app of all. In the App Store, just type in Joru Dan and it'll lead you straight to the Japan Transit Planner. You open it up and you can plan literally any trip with public transportation in this app. Let's try a trip from Tokyo to Shinjuku. Just entering Shinjuku here, hit search and add the time. There we go. It loads for a little bit, it has these cute animations, and then boom, it gives me all these options. I can take the Chuo line, or I could take the Tokyo Metro Marunouchi line, or a variety of different options, and Jorudang tells me how expensive it is, how much time it costs, what time the trains leave, and also gives me the option for quickest, cheapest, and easiest. Uh, any route in Japan works. Let's try Kachidoki to Higashikurume, a commute I used to make every day. See, this one turns out as well. I know I feel a little bit evil keeping this until the very end, but I wanted to prove to you that the Tokyo map really can make sense. That being said, you've made it all the way to the end of the video. You deserve to treat yourself with a helpful app like this. You should also treat yourself by subscribing to Trains Are Awesome. Every week we have new cool content about train travel or just how to use trains like this video. Make sure to tune in next week and we'll see you then.